Hello, and welcome to my talk. Today, we present a method to convert from linear triangle surface meshes to coarser high-order tetrahedral volume meshes. We present the first automated pipeline that can be run on thousands of complex geometry models without the need of many parameter tuning and fix. Our method strives to coarsen the output while guaranteeing a valid result. Our output high-order meshes are always composed of valid, non-flip, finite elements, and without self-intersection. The algorithm maintains arbitrary feature tagging and respects the distance bound provided by the user. Our elements are tetrahedral with high-order geometric maps. Different from linear elements, whose flip can be determined with a volume computation, curved elements can be partially flipped or overlap without local inversion. We prevent both these cases from happening. Secondly, even with a really thin gap and complex features from the input, our algorithm can gracefully maintain the topology and prevents intersections from happening. In addition, the user can specify a set of points on the input surface, and they will have distinct corresponding points on the output, and their distance will be maintained below the specified threshold. Also, the user can set arbitrary edge chains or graphs from the input, and for the tagged edge, there will be a corresponding segment from the output high-order edges. And finally, we provide a continuous bijection from the input surface to the volumetric output surface. This enables the transfer of colors, materials, and boundary conditions in between. This bijective map can take advantage of easy surface geometry processing algorithms on the input, such as editing, coloring, and modeling. And then it can transfer them onto the curved mesh. This curved mesh, which is a volume mesh with few elements, is particularly good at fast simulation. The result of stress and displacement can be transferred back, resulting in a synergy across different representations. Our algorithm is also resilient to low quality input, allowing us to batch process large data sets of triangle meshes. Let's start from the basics. When we perform physical simulation and scientific computing with finite element-based methods, it is a common choice to discretize the domain as a tetrahedral mesh. The runtime of your simulation typically depends on the number of tetrahedra. However, if you don't have a large budget for the tetrahedra, you cannot accurately represent the domain and the solution. Today, we're going to talk about how to break this balance with coarser meshes. And we advocate for the use of more powerful tests, those who can curve. In the graphics setting, we're already quite familiar with Bernstein polynomials, where you can do a weighted sum of these polynomials to obtain a curve with fixed number of control points. Similarly, you have phasor triangles in two dimensions, and finally, high-order tetrahedron in 3D. Such polynomial elements have superior convergence in approximation, and now let's use them to approximate our geometry. For example, by setting a fixed distance tolerance, this linear tetrahedral mesh cannot be much simplified beyond. But on the right, we obtain a much coarser mesh with a similar geometric approximation. In short, the adoption of high-order meshes allows us to go even coarser without sacrificing our geometry. Curved meshes are not new. In fact, it has been used to describe the simulation domain since the very early development of the finite element method itself. 
and it is supported by many simulation and, and scientific computation packages with a wide range of applications in structural analysis, electromagnetics, computational fluid dynamics, and so on. They show great benefits when you have the mesh, but one of the main challenges for more widespread practical usage, we believe, is there hasn't been a robust pipeline to generate these meshes. Without further ado, let's see what's so difficult about making these meshes. This problem does not seem difficult as far as thoughts. Indeed, the simple pipeline would be to start from a mesh, perform some simplification or sampling, tetrahedralize the domain, then put additional nodes as control points to curve your mesh. Here, a few problems immediately arise. To start with, the simplified mesh may not be valid to tetrahedralize. Second, simple fitting easily lead to inverted or invalid elements. These elements are not suitable for FEM analysis. Quite a few research has been de developed to untangling them, but no method can reliably untangle large collection of models. Finally, geometric features, especially those of different scales, would likely to be lost since there is no tolerance or topology control. And worse yet, unless you have a perfect global parameterization, you would not be able to even measure and limit the discrepancies here. And our method provides a solution to the problems we just mentioned. Our method strives to generate a coarse mesh while satisfying the validity constraints with users' requirements. This is a great wish list, but how do we tackle them? First, note that the requirements can be categorized into those related to the volume and those happening around the surface. Therefore, I will first explain what happens around the surface then integrate this into a volumetric pipeline. Overall, we start from a triangle mesh that is watertight, manifold, and free of self-intersection. We first build a shell around the mesh following the algorithm of the bijective projection in a shell. During this building phase, we impose additional constraints to make sure the generation of a valid shell mesh around the surface. The mesh is composed of valid high-order tetrahedral elements with linear boundaries. Then we fill the interior with linear tabs and perform coupled optimization. Let's be a bit superficial and look at what happens around the surface. Given an input mesh, we can build a shell as a collection of generalized prism cells. Following the algorithm of the bijective projection in a shell, here on we will refer to it as the shell. A vector field can be defined within the shell, and as long as the input mesh does not have conflicting normals with the vector field direction, this input can be bijectively mapped to the mid surface of this shell. This mid surface can be seen as a coarse parametric domain of this input mesh. And if you collect some uniformly sampled points, you can use this correspondence to fit a continuous triangular Bezier patch with least square fitting. This already gives us a, ha a handy way to create a high order and coarse surface mesh. And thanks to the shell, the surface is in bijection with the input meaning that you can use this map to also measure the distance on the points or transfer quantities. Note that the least square fitting here does not depend on the interpolant, so our framework can be adapted to fit your favorite polynomial basis. Here we use cubic Bayer patch for the surface. However, the simple fitting paradigm has an unfortunate downside. The surface patch it created are not aware of the spatial information, and it is difficult to check the self-intersection and global intersection across patches. 
So we make another key observation here and use this shell for the additional purpose. Notice that the input mesh actually stays in the shell. And therefore, we can achieve a similar approximation power by seeing the fitting as a volume warp inside the prisms. That is, we still fit the mid surface as is, but keep the top and bottom surface to be linear, then interpolate in between. In this way, we can effectively reduce the self intersection of the patch into checking the positivity of the Jacobians inside the prism. And the global problem can be checked through the intersection of linear top and bottom surfaces. We also show in the paper, as long as the boundaries are not intersecting, the positivity of Jacobians is sufficient to guarantee the validity of all the elements. These high order prisms are tessellated into three high order tetrahedra. Uh, in the illustration, we are actually splitting the quadrilaterals into two high order triangles. And therefore, this prism shell of valid projection implies a shell mesh consists of linear boundary with valid curved elements. In the previous slides, we are primarily concerned with how to check the distance and positivity. That is because we adopt an incremental approach for the construction. We create an initial shell around the surface such that it is a valid linear tetrahedral shell with all the features preserved and trivially exactly zero distance. Then we perform some shell operations to course the st structure. We use the same operations including shell-based edge flip, edge collapse, and smoothing. Before each operation, we check the original shell validity as well as our new condition, including that the high order volume warp contains positive Jacobian everywhere, and the check distance are not exceeding the prescribed threshold. Also, the top and bottom surfaces should be free of self intersection. Through this pipeline, we can now arrive at a course tetrahedral mesh of the shell with linear top and bottom surfaces. The remain remaining task at hand is to fill the void inside the bottom surfaces. Or you can do it symmetrically outside the top surface. This problem can be formulated as a constrained Delaunay triangulation. But due to the issue of its robustness, we have combined the shell and tet weld to design a robust method to fill the interior of our mesh. Please refer to the paper if you want to learn more about it. And after filling the void with linear tetrahedral mesh, we now have a mixed mesh with high order elements around the surface and linear elements inside. All the elements are valid finite elements. Then we perform some additional tetrahedral mesh operations that further improves the quality and reduce the total element count, while always preserving the whole mesh to be still valid. While most of these illustrations naturally generalize to 3D, when you repl replace this quadrilateral to a generalized prism, this prism can be divided consistently into three tetrahedra. There is there is yet one important component missing regarding the handling of the features. The original shell formulation cannot prescribe arbitrary edge chain and control their image through the bijective map. If you want to build a single prism for several triangles, the projection on the side will not follow the edge chain. Therefore, we adopt a snapping formulation much like those in the UV mapping literature. Using this intermediate snap mesh, which is in natural correspondence with the initial input, we can now build a simplified shell and perform curving as before. Here, we start with a dense mesh with circular features. 
the algorithm can partially snap the input circle adaptively, automatically, and recover it through the fitting. To do this, we also enrich our set of local operations by including the simplification of the features. For details, please refer to the paper. And that's all the necessary ingredients. Our algorithm starts from the denser triangle mesh and produces a valid bijective and coarse high order pet mesh, where we can preserve the features and control the distance. One particular reason for our choice of input as a triangle mesh is not only because we work in graphics, but also we recognize that there are simply just more of them. For example, when you start with a boundary representation, you can create a triangle mesh rather easily. Then you can feed it into our algorithm for a coarser simulation mesh. Starting from an implicit, you can do the same. Here we also compute a geodesic field on the intermediate triangle mesh and transfer it for visualize on the curved mesh. This cute spotty cow is originally in the form of subdivision surfaces and then we subdivide it densely in order to generate a smooth curved mesh with colors. This example shows how you can use the synergy to transfer geometry processing results onto the curved mesh. On the other hand, you can also take advantage of the faster simulation from the curved mesh. To put this back into context, we can envision a simulation pipeline as the following. Start with a, this armadillo triangle mesh. We specify a few regions for boundary conditions. A coarse high order tetrahedral mesh can be created which exactly preserve these regions. It is then used to undergo a fast simulation, which only takes 10 seconds. If you perform a similar simulation on a dense linear tetra tetrahedral mesh, it will take up to an hour. And then the solution as a displacement field is transferred back to the original surface mesh. This is the end of our algorithm today, but I hope it's not the end of the story. I believe there are a few valuable directions to pursue as future works. Our current result would show visual artifacts for the curved edges, especially if you ask the mesh to be much coarser. Extending the framework to produce a barrier surfaces would benefit design and reverse engineering. Additionally, although we produce good quality and coarse meshes, our current running time is relatively high. This cost can be amortized in a full FVM pipeline, but still it is valuable work to improve it in the future. Now let us summarize. In this talk, we present a robust method to convert from watertight manifold triangle meshes to high order tetrahedral meshes that are coarse, bijective, and satisfy validity conditions. We share our tested data set as well as the implementation to foster the adoption of these nice meshes. You're more than welcome to try it out. That's the end for today. Thank you very much for the attention.